What's up guys? It's Alex and today we're gonna be doing the Spectre 2.0 setup tour. Now, I've teased this quite a bit over the past couple of days. It's finally done and I think now is the time to finally do the tour video. See if you can be inspired to get some of your own ideas from this setup. I know I have taken a lot of ideas from other setups and incorporated them into my build over the years. It's finally done and I think we can finally jump into it. So, uh, let's go. So starting with like the boring stuff, we can start with the desktop. This is an Ikea concrete laminate desktop or concrete like desktop. And it's actually not that expensive. They're about $100 for the entire desktop. And this is 98 inches. I have two of them connected in kind of a corner angle. And they're sitting on the infamous Alex drawers, which are actually sold out like everywhere now. I'm not even joking. You can't find these at any Ikea anymore. You gotta go on eBay. Then they're on like these stilts, these furniture legs that it's pretty popular in the battle stations Reddit. I've said it before, this is like a go-to setup. One of the largest amounts of desk space you can get for the price and it's a good deal. So moving on from the desktop, we can talk about headphones, which have been my favorite headphones for quite a long time now. And they're like the infamous Audio-Technica M50X. So these are an amazing pair of headphones that aren't necessarily the most expensive They've been like the go-to staple of audiophile headphones under $150 for quite a long time now. And I actually have them plugged into the Focusrite Scarlet Solo, which is my amp for these guys. And then I have a SteelSeries Game DAC for like gaming headphones, which I use the Arctis Pro. Next to that, you're gonna find a speaker, which is the Logitech Z625s. Now, these speakers are THX certified. They're not necessarily audiophile monitors, but they have powerful bass and thumping sound. So I basically use these for gaming, listening to movies, watching movies, listening to music. They're a really neat pair of speakers that don't necessarily break the bank. And I've been using them for two months now and they sound pretty good. They got that overemphasized bass that makes them sound really good for gaming. Then we talk about the current Bluetooth headphone pick, the Sony WH-1000XM4s. Now I'm not gonna give any thoughts on these because I got these not too long ago. I've been testing them for a review video. So stay tuned for that. I got these in the setup right now. So uh, we'll see how uh, they, turn out. They're pretty good, I'm gonna be honest. Okay, so peripherals. Camera is dying and footage was corrupted. Corsair K70 Mark II RGB HyperX pudding keycaps. So you can see the lights. RGB, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. And Razer Viper Ultimate, which is a pretty good mouse. I like it, it's overpriced. It's like $150, too much money, absolutely. Really good though, I like it. <laughs> Grip tape for uh, extra grip, and then it's got like little slides to slide around the mouse pad. I like the mouse. Is it expensive? Probably too much, but like most things. Speaking of mouse pads, I'm using the Mouse Pad Company, this topographic design that's red, paired with the Razer Viper Ultimate. It kind of just glides, it's a nice experience. And again, it doesn't break the bank like an Artisan mouse pad, which costs like $100. Okay, so let's talk about the displays in the setup and see if I can nail all the specs off the top of my head. So they are LG's 34GN850 monitors. They use a nano IPS display at 160 Hertz, 3440 by 1440, 21 by nine, 34 inch monitors. They're really color accurate, great for gaming, and basically checked all the boxes that I personally wanted for a monitor. Now I'm a really big fan of 21 by nine monitors. Like I love the aspect ratio that they provide. Now 4K monitors are awesome. However, these get close enough personally for me. They're also a lot brighter than the previous monitor I used to use. So I'm a big fan of having two monitors for the setup and two monitors that are not only good for gaming, but they're great for content creation. So I've been using these two displays for about a week and a half now. I haven't had them that long, but I can tell you one thing. The last video was color graded on this display, and I feel like I could dial the colors in just a little bit better than I could on a VA panel. Now, to drive these panels, you need some horsepower. So I'm still using my PC that I built two years ago, which is rocking a 2080 Ti. Rip, by the way. 30 series came out and they're worth nothing now compared to what they used to be worth. An 8700K paired with 48 gigs of Corsair's Vengeance Pro RAM. So 
that's pretty much it for the machine. That's the machine that does the videos, does the gaming, and does anything else I do on the computer. So overall, this system is awesome for gaming. With the new monitors, everything runs silky smooth. And when it comes to video editing, it's also an amazingly smooth experience. So that's pretty much it. This is my 2020 workstation where I make all the videos and do all my computing things. So for the most part, that is everything. I think I covered everything without going too much into detail. If you guys wanna see like a what's on my phone video or what's on my iPad video, I'm down to do one of those too. Feel free to leave a comment down below if you wanna see any devices reviewed or you wanna see anything in the future. So I appreciate you guys for watching. I'm really thankful to have the ability to use an amazing setup like this. And I thank you guys for watching the videos. So leave a comment down below if you're interested. Follow me on social media. I'm floating around on the internet sometimes. So I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.